wonder who built your house, who cleaned your room with a view, who made the food that you'll be eating sweat from the... Right, welcome back, Gamer Sanctuary, Fresh Coast Gaming fans. Uh, it is Wednesday night, which is typically our Infinity or 40K night, but uh, Muggins and Tau Forever want to get in a game of uh, War Machine because they're getting ready for the Michigan Cup. Um, if we're doing a regional, re a regional War Machine and Horde tournament in September. Uh, 32 players from all over the state. We're going to basically uh, be fighting out to, uh, to see who has the, the best club slash store in the state. Uh, Gamer Sanctuary is, is hosting it. Fresh Coast Gaming is sponsoring it. It's going to be really cool. Um, anyway, these guys want to get in uh, a little prep game for it. Uh, and we're going to be calling this our Pacific Rim game. And I'll show you why in just a second. All right, representing the uh, last hope of humanity in the Jaeger program, we have Adam's uh, Retribution. Uh, most of the stuff you've seen before in Bat Raps, especially the uh, blog famous Hyperion with its LEDs. Um, we have Kitlissa and two Arcanists, some Mage Hunters, uh, Stormfall Archers, Epic Eris, Iris, excuse me, uh, a Chimera down here in the corner. Uh, that's one of the Mage Hunter solos right there in front of some Dawn Guard Sentinels. So let's see what uh, Mike is bringing for his kaiju today. And representing the kaiju, we have Xerxes and his giant mammoth. As if the thing wasn't big enough, Mike put him on a, a custom base to make it look like he was toppling the wall of uh, was it I, the whose wall was it in the fluff? <clears throat> they uh, Makeda attacked the Iocian wall, uh, and one of the mammoths actually toppled over the wall and. <laughs> Took out a bunch of IOs. Nice. So not only is it a nice scenic piece, it uh, it's also very functional actually, because it's so high, it it clears a lot of space, which uh, a lot of the colossals have problems with. But it's also super fluffy and thematic. So, yay for Mike. Uh, well, go ahead and tell us what else you brought today. Uh, so Xerxes has his mammoth, his Freya, a gladiator, and Aptimus Marketh in his battle group. <clears throat> Uh, we have for mercenaries swamp gobbers to provide some defense bonus, or in midwinter to say no magic around me. Uh, we have the beast handlers obviously to whip and enrage the beasts, and then we have Citrati to break up and, and take some objectives. Very cool. Are those the new plastic ones? Metal ones. Oh, the old metal ones. All right. All right. Very cool. So again, kaiju and, and ja yeah, Jagger fight. Um, let's see what the uh, the deployment is. I think they're actually going to play a scenario too. All right, continuing the uh, the fluffiness of this uh, this this game, uh, Adam decided to add some some of the uh, Gale Force Nine Elf terrain uh, on his side to defend. Uh, they are going to be playing one of the scenarios out of the Steamroller packet. This is close quarters. Uh, each uh, each player has a flag that is in their half of the table that they uh, they can get capture control points uh, for holding theirs, but they get extra points for holding the, their opponent's flag. First to five wins in this case. Uh, you don't start collecting until turn two, which uh, gives you a chance to kind of maneuver around a bit. But we see Adam's uh, um, his uh, elves all lined up. What are they called? Why can't I think of what they're called? No, the, you, uh, hi, you're, uh, uh, the entire faction. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Retribution, uh, thank you. Um, he's got his, his uh, sentinels lined up here on the hill. Uh, Hyperion in the middle, all the Mage Hunters uh, advanced to play up front to be able to grab that objective quickly. Uh, and back over here, we've got the Mammoth getting ready to topple over his wall. The Citrati and uh, Xerxes in a big block here, going to move up here, uh, up, up the ramp to grab that flag. And uh, the rest of Mike's guys are over here. So we're going to uh, go first. Who's got the first turn, guys? Michael does. So uh, what we typically do with War Machine, we're just going to do all of turn one in one video and then come back in turn two. So let's go to turn one, boys. All right, well, these guys are playing their game. I'm actually painting behind Adam over there, so I kind of wasn't paying attention the first turn. I'm going to have Mike tell you what he did, and then Adam tell you what he did, and uh, then we'll move on to turn two. So go ahead, Mike. Yeah, so I moved up with Xerxes, um, put Fury on those guys. It's an upkeep. It's plus three damage, minus one defense, so they hit really hard. They already have Weapon Master. Um, and he's going to try to upkeep that? Is that what that is for them? Um, it's an upkeep spell, okay. yeah. Uh, he then cast Defender's Ward on the Mammoth, plus two armor, plus two defense. So he's now super bulky. 22 armor, 12, 10 impressive. defense. So 22 armor is really, really good. Um, Mortithurge moved up. He's going to be able to cast Ancillary Attack on him. Over here, I bricked up uh, with plus two armor, plus two defense from the Kraya within two inches. Uh, the Cloud gives plus two defense, obviously not against those guys. And then he went... Uh, Midwinter went stealth. Okay. 
I don't know if he's going to do a lot this, this game against that. Right. And again, that's kind of how the first turns go with War Machine. You, you're, you're getting in position and setting things up. So let's see how Adam set up in the counterattack. Okay, so uh, the terrain's proving a little challenge for me. But, yeah, that's uh, an awful lot for a War Machine table. a lot of terrain, but uh, I kind of looking like that flag over there. I obviously got to not let him just sit there and start scoring points. So yeah. Sentinels are heading that way. I got a couple of them base to base, so they get the defensive line. Chimera moved up for the Arc Node. I ran the Hyperion up. Uh, Iris and, and uh, Calissa are kind of floating around behind. She casts Phantom Hunter on herself, camped the rest of her focus. And the Mage Hunters popped a couple shots at the Cataphracty. I put a couple wounds on one guy, but they have, they're so tough. And Calissa did pop her feet, so everything it can't be charged this turn and has stealth except okay. for Hyper. All right. And uh, uh, I wanted to also point out, these, these guys, like I said, they're, they are playing lists that they're planning on bringing to the, the Michigan Cup in some, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but that is a two-list format, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you wouldn't typically see, I don't think you would see Adam take this list against a Horde army. No, well, she's not bad against Hordes, but this is sort of Yeah, my, the Mage Hunters getting their extra, uh, not having their extra yeah, die, they completely really lose their purpose. So I just wanted to point that out for all of you uh, War Machine players out there who uh, were trying to question why Adam would do this. Um, it's not necessarily an optimized they're list to play against Horde. They're not bad against Horde, they're just like better against War Machine. Yes, yes, let's just, we'll, we'll put it that way. They're, armor, they're not armor crackers, right? Yeah, they're not no, armor crackers. No, no. All right, so we're going to move into turn two. We'll see what Muggins does in, uh, in response to Adam's advances. Maybe he's going to slap him in the face. All right, here we have Mike's turn two. Uh, we see a lot of things advance, but I'll let Mike tell you exactly what he did. Um, I put Defender's Ward on them, and they shield walled so that they could move up. Just... Because shield wall's an ability, not a spell, that can all stack together. Right, so they're armor 22 right now. Nice. Um, they're just kind of chilling. Xerxes is chilling there. I couldn't really charge or anything this turn. I took four shots with this dude, and they all hit right about here. They did nothing. Okay. Um, he has stealth, so I auto missed, but I thought I could get some lucky. Some yeah, lucky, lucky scatters, scatters can help. Didn't really help. It's one of the weird. I think it's one of the weirder mechanics in War Machine. <laughs> the, the, the stealth mechanic, it just yeah, especially when you're shooting with AOEs, it's uh, yeah, so I, it's a little um, goofy. <laughs> didn't do a whole lot this turn. Okay. All right, so we're going to move now into Adam's turn two and see if he can grab uh, some points for uh, scoring the objective. Score at the end of my turn. Yep, so we start scoring at the end of turn two. All right, Adam's turn was kind of characterized by... Uh, uh, ineffective shooting. Yeah, ineff very ineffective shooting. Uh, everything either missed... Or was uh, yeah, it was hitting high, high armor targets. Um, some of the highlights: one of the swamp gobbers is, uh, has been killed by a scattered shot, I think, uh, and the other one made his command check. He's still good. Uh, one of the pain givers was killed by the mage hunters, and one of the satrati was taken out by the uh, the dawn guard sentinels over here. Uh, but he's doing a good job, starting to contest this this objective while scoring a point on his own. My however, my yep. However, Kalissa is sitting right. Yep. There. A little big elephant staring at her. And yep, we have the the mammoth sitting right here, ready to drop some templates on her. So we'll see if she manages to, manages to survive. Yeah, he's only rat three, so you know we'll see. Uh, moving into Mike's turn three, Adam is ahead one to nothing, I believe. All right, Mike's turn three. I uh, saw a little bit of um, vengeance on the retribution. That's kind of a a. a, a, a Oxymoron, I guess, um, or redundancy. Uh, the Satrati killed the, some of the Dawn Guard that were uh, contesting the objective, but Adam is still close enough to keep contesting, so he doesn't get any points there. Uh, they did castle up, though. They're super buffed now, so their their defense and armor are much higher. Um, he cast hospitable ground, so hopefully. Okay. It'll be, It'll be harder for him to catch up. Uh, they, they will have a vengeance move in the, in the beginning of Adam's turn. 1.5 inches. Um, let's see. Over oh, here, uh, the, the mammoth, Mammy the mammoth, uh, tried to drop some shots on Kalissa, but because he couldn't get over the wall completely, he had to stop right there, meaning all of his shots fell just short. So they all scattered uh, kind of crazily. Um, did get some good hits, though, and uh, took out about half of the mage hunters. So, oh, and one of the, uh, the, one of the arcanists. Um, um, but Adam managed to score yet another uh, victory point by holding on to his objective, and uh, Mike tried to clear off his. So now Adam's going to take his turn three and see if he can't uh, keep contesting that one while holding on to 
The one he has? And I use my feet. So oh, yeah, and he popped his feet too. People who are touching the warrior model are plus two armor. Okay. So, yeah, again, everything on Mike's side is super armor buffed right now. Scorner people too. Scorner people too? Uh, and since he's touching a warrior model, he gets plus two as well. We do kind of have the dark elf versus elf matchup here, don't we, a little bit? Yeah, it is a little bit, yeah. If you go back, I think that's what's going on. Kind of, yeah. They, they have that aesthetic, that, you know, the pleasure from pain and all that jazz. That, I don't know, Mike seems to really like. How's your wife take that? I wasn't really into the S&M stuff at first. <laughs> at first, but <laughs> at first. Um, but you can you kind of get around that weird Do you have a safe word? No. No? Uh, I'll, well, give, I'll give you one. It's fire truck. Fire truck? <laughs> fire truck. All right, Mike's new safe word is fire truck. I am the worst. All right, in a true cinematic fashion, if you haven't seen Pacific Rim, by the way, you need to. Uh, the Jagger of the Hyperion charged through the river. Y Jaeger, sorry, Jaeger. <laughs> I've been saying it. I've been saying it, Jaeger, the entire time too. Uh, the Jaeger charged through the river, and uh, with concentrated power from the Arcanist, put a hurting on the mammoth. Uh, it's still kicking though. It's it's got a lot of boxes of damage. Uh, in other news, a couple of brutal shots, couple of brutal well. shots uh, hit over here. Uh, did a couple, did. Piece, got a couple damage, but, but one of them scattered back and actually killed two yeah, of the mage the, hunters. The mage hunters actually charged in this area. They yep. combined against him, did a little bit of damage, but he's using uh, Xerxes' feet. Yeah, everything, Xerxes' feet really making fire. everything really hard to kill. Uh, over here, yep. I whacked one of the one of the Satrati is dead. I actually did enough damage to get a path for her to charge, yep. but and then the other three guys all missed. Yeah, and, then and I, over here, the mage hunter had a, a charge to or had an opportunity to charge Xerxes, did one damage, which doubled, doubled to two from uh, Grievous Wounds. Um, so that was a good a good attempt right here, but uh, she's now uh, yeah she's now on her own, and Adam still is scoring more points. So it's a three nothing right now, correct? And it's Mike's turn. Yep, yep three nothing. So Mike's got to do something about that. All right, we're starting to see the kaiju push back a little bit. The you notice the Hyperion is gone. Um, Mammoth had a uh, he was uh, whipped by one of the pain givers and had a spell cast on him to get a plus five to the damage he dealt this turn and just obliterated the uh, the Hyperion. Uh, he had what plenty of focus he left to go right. You had to you riled him three times afterward. Uh, so yeah, he still had lots of uh, ancillary attack, lots of uh, extras. Yep. Uh, the Centrati, the Citrati, excuse me, over here uh, managed to kill off a couple more of the, the Dawn Guard Sentinels, but they're still kicking and they're going to get their vengeance move. This objective is hotly contested. Um, but the other uh, action of, of note this this round was the uh, the Gladiator charging through the the river, trampling through, uh, stomping on one Mage Hunter and uh, Eris to contest this objective, so Adam is no longer going to be scoring points every turn. Um, this might just be the turning point for Mike. He, may, he might have held out long enough just to be able to uh, to uh, to catch up in the long run. All right, so we're going to move it into Adam's turn. This is what, turn four? Adam's turn four. All right, Adam's turn four. Turned out to be really... Uh, Good shooting. Uh, really good shooting for him. Finally, he, he needed that. And uh, also a lot of tactical play uh, based on the, uh, the mission objective. Uh, the gladiator's no longer there, thanks to the shooting from the Stormfall archers. And yeah, brutal shot managed to do it. Uh, lucky shot from that last archer, though. He just barely hit him, and he only did a single box of damage, but that was enough. Uh, over here, we see the rest of the, uh, the Dawnguard Sentinels finally get in. They didn't manage to kill anybody, but all the Satrati are really beat up. Uh, Mage Hunters over here did manage to fin finish off Warren, so there's no uh, uh, null zone for the, for the spells over here anymore. Uh, but the, probably the most tactical thing that he did was was uh, jumping his light jack. What is that? The uh, Chimera. The Chimera right in the path of the Mammoth, so that that he uh, the Mammoth can't trample or run himself over there. To uh, you shall not pass. Yeah, the, the, you shall not pass. Thank you, Gandalf. Um, but now, as a result, the Mammoth can't get in here to contest that objective next turn. So Mike's really got to figure out something to do to uh, to try to win this game because Adam just picked up his fourth point and is about ready to get the fifth in Mike's turn. So Mike is. Uh, uh, up against the wall. Yeah. Alright, Mike is doing a pretty good job of staying alive. He managed to get enough of his models uh, close enough to contest the objective. Uh, Mammoth's shot scattered off of Kalissa and killed some of the mage hunters on the bridge. Uh, the Agonizer, a couple of the pain givers, and the gobbers all survived some free strikes to get up there and get away from everybody to uh, to contest. Over here, the Dawn Guard dropped to one model, and that's all Adam has on this entire flank. Um, Matter, yeah, it's it's gonna be real hard for Mike to uh, to to keep contested that objective now in, in Adam's turn five.
All right, game is over. Uh, Adam managed to clear out everything contesting the objective and yeah, collect that last point, so he won the scenario. Uh, it, it took a while. Mike was doing a, a good job of, uh, of delaying it, but uh, that Mammoth being out of range for a lot of his shots I don't think really helped. Uh, it was very tough for him to do anything. With, you know, he, he did take a Hyperion, what, four swings? <laughs> Which was crazy. The last turn, but, Mike, Mike had four things contesting here. I yeah. had one AOE hit from her spell and a shot. And the one last shot from here took out the Agonizer, which was contesting. So All right. So, a, yeah, uh, it, it still close. came down it to it. Close. One yeah. miss there would have probably changed this game a little bit again. All right. So, even though the Jagger fell, the Kaiju lose. <laughs> yeah. The Pacific Rim match. The Pacific Rim match is what we've been calling this. All right, so thanks again for watching. Um, oh, we're, hopefully, yeah, there we go. Get the handshake in there, guys. Uh, we'll try to get a lot more War Machine as we ramp up for the Michigan Cup. And uh, see you then.